There's a number of reasons why people study whole blood, uh, in particular because it's a readily accessible source of clinical samples. In addition to ha having a number of surrogate biomarkers that represent disease states across a wide range of, of therapeutic areas. So Nugent has developed a number of systems over the last several years to address the need for working with whole blood in microarray applications as well as qPCR. So with the, the launch of our Encore Whole Blood RNA-Seq library system, we're enabling people to work with whole blood total RNA in a next generation sequencing context. Uh, and what's great about this product is that it reduces unwanted reads from ribosomal and globin RNA, allowing you to maximize the productivity of your sequencing. The unwanted transcripts in the blood RNA can make up to as much as 50, even 60 percent of the total uh, transcripts that are present. Uh, some of the features of this kit are the ability to make stranded libraries for Illumina sequencing starting with 100 nanograms of input RNA and you can get up to an 80 to 90 percent reduction in ribosomal and globin representation which allows you to maximize your sequencing productivity. We have two kits, each has a set of eight indexed adapters so you can multiplex up to 16 different samples in one lane and the total protocol takes about seven to eight hours to perform. We're using a technology called Indice, which is insert-dependent adapter cleavage. And basically, we have Indice probes, which bind to sequences of targeted or unwanted transcripts, which are then extended and create a cleavage site in the adapter, which is used to cleave the library molecule, and then it cannot be amplified by PCR. Our technology communications team has put together a nice illustration of Nugent's strand retention and indice technologies. A pool of random and oligo DT primers is used to prime cDNA synthesis, generating a first strand cDNA pool that represents the entire transcriptome. For clarity, we are illustrating only a single priming event at the three prime end of the mRNA transcript. However, in practice, reverse transcription is initiated along the entire length of each transcript. Following RNA degradation, second strand synthesis incorporates a degradable nucleotide analog into the sent strand of the double-stranded cDNA. The nucleotide analog tags the sent strand in preparation for strand selection. Double-stranded cDNA is fragmented by sonication, generally using Kovaris adaptive focused acoustics technology. Key to maintaining strand specificity in the Encore Whole Blood RNA-Seq library are our unique forward and reverse adapters. By tagging the ligation strand of the forward adapter with the same degradable nucleotide analog used in the sent strand of the cDNA, we ensure that only a single directionally conserved orientation of the cDNA insert will produce sequence data. Following end repair, Modified forward and reverse library adapters are ligated to the fragmented cDNA. During blunt end ligation, the forward and reverse adapters can be ligated to the cDNA fragments in two orientations. Base excision and denaturation destroys sequences containing the nucleotide analog, leaving a single, directionally conserved orientation that retains both forward and reverse adapter sequences. Only molecules with both a forward and reverse adapter can be amplified during library enrichment, resulting in a sequence library almost exclusively in the sent strand orientation. Insert-dependent adapter cleavage, or indice, is a critical step for reducing the abundance of globin and ribosomal RNA transcripts in the final library. To illustrate how the indice process works, the single-stranded library is shown following the strand selection process. Within the pool of strand-specific library molecules, sequences targeted for elimination, in this case ribosomal RNA and globin transcripts, are shown in red. A pool of transcript-specific primers is added to initiate synthesis of the partner strand of the target sequences in the single-stranded library. The double-strand sequence 
generates a specific cleavage site at the junction of the reverse adapter and the cDNA insert. A site-specific cleavage reaction removes the reverse adapter, rendering the target molecules incapable of enrichment PCR amplification. Final library enrichment using forward and reverse adapter PCR primers generates a sense strand ribosomal RNA and globin depleted library ready for sequencing. So the biggest challenge has been that we want to reduce the representation of reads which are unwanted by the customer and do that in a way where we're not affecting the profile of the desired transcripts. And this is some data just showing how effective this is. The first set of bars there, that's a sample where no indice probe was used. And you can see that together the ribosomal and globin transcripts make up about 50% of all of the reads that are present. When you combine both of the sets of the indice probes together, you reduce the representation of the ribosomal and globin down to about six or seven percent of the reads and your desired reads are brought up to about 90 percent. So you're effectively doubling the output of your sequencing. This is a comparison of FPKM plots for libraries that were generated with and without the indice probes. So this is looking just at non-globin and non-ribosomal transcripts and you can see that there's very little effect on the expression or representation of those non-targeted sequences. The future is to identify other starting materials where customers want to reduce some transcripts while maintaining other transcripts in order to maximize their sequencing dollar.